Christians, my friends. Foolish born again Christians. Who are believers and not thinkers. You lie to them, they believe it. You deceive them. They, you know the Christians, born again Christians, are the easiest people to deceive? I open out on this one. These are the words of a wise man. Nobody carries a heavy burden than he who has evil intentions. Once there's a creation, there must be a creator. God whose supernatural powers and miracles can only be found in a book, but not in real life. It's equal to a God who never existed. Nasajina Nijuma, Bojine Bre, Abraham Ben Moshe, leader of Common Sense Family, No Size, Wagwan Piblak. My friends, foolish born again Christians. My friends, foolish born again Christians who are believers and not thinkers. Yeah, Zoe, once again, you know, when you're young, you believe everything, but when you grow, you need to question them. Um, these are some questions very relevant. Don't be offended. Get a music, all right, tea. Many so time in the movie, I see me and I used to be a baby, and I'm going to be a baby. A Christopher Fossey, Jesus is coming soon, 2019 years ago, and so still I won't do. Common sense in your judgment, in your side of why you got in a feeding, on your coupon, sit behind the wembo. Yeah, to be on the map on summer, I went to. We are here, 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 we on the bomb me on my margin for self defense. When I go bob on some seven, some many pie up on here. I didn't want to be a city to avoid more offense. But when I come on some no corner bar, before then, we be who who be in Kika. Or not this room for when to many a one antenna. Now, you know, you're just a son of Yabesh Amana Jacuna. Hey, who be the enemy? Some more cassab on some more. It's Sunday so funny. Or Christonia, we need door. When you're missing pony. Now, move on pie to two to not really make more money. And Pabon save your economy. So shut up. Use the common sense. Yeah, you might never want my name with daily bread. Not to wear Japa dear who fence. Oh, quite so you want to go body in the church. Who to ask the most of four and a year in a week? Ah, we don't go pong with the bank account. Yeah, I'm a son panic over back a crack of Yanka. Who to our tight to our deals a good dollar pounds. And so make us say you'll be pong sorry. I could in pampa. We don't respect your marriage. I'm a senior meal. We don't go pong boy. I say, I'm a son of your way. Yahoo. It's we a lawyer near. We a doctor near. We a teacher near. Didn't cry and one no. CSF Abraham Ben Moshe. Now, now you can't tell my gun and TTC. They say religion, they come here, yes, and young sign your dream of being moved. You're too young, coach, and not you're not going to be a friend of Bruni, you know, who's your baby, and your friend of Frederick. And so, who Bruni be your friend of Kofi Konto? Your identity, so who's going to be called the brethren? Bruni said, they get it, that's why I'll be named Bobo. I don't know what body they bread, Obi and who are watching the BSC, can't have one play, what Bruni can't pray, they talk to the end of Africa. You're too young, you're a baby, you're a boy. Your friend is away, you're not going to be a boy. the brain we need common sense we need wisdom we need insight we need understanding to run a nation we don't need prayers compile work as here david cotetti and chain sufra rade was a quad of four quad of four cotetti and chain one tati and chain national coin not the ueni can touch yana fine as a man a 16 gates and one summer first gate no angel big will get an fn ayakim second gate angel big or yafan nafta Third gate into the hall, you find a Kelly. What did he create theory? What's of him too? Who are you? Adam Webb. Now, one web you want to be some question. Now, I'm a new Samson Assan. What do you want Samson Assan? Now, someone can save you. That's what you want to be some question. Now, it's now. Now, it's now. Now, one web you want to be some question. Tina, 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 Christians yeah. are the customers. Your prophets and your pastors are the beneficiaries. Yeah. Logic and common sense. Mimi for abo ade abo ni chan. Sade. So we are Christian inti. Eti na. Christian na mo echi ni edi. Eti mimi for ade abo ni chan. Mimi ade abo chuya kodu tamu abo kwa bronze mu jam. Na mimi ma kwa heaven. On fa na abo ni chan. Sade. There will be sade coffee. Sade ade eti na mimi fa ni chan. Ose wanu ni ho. Wanu ni ho. Ani wanu ni ho. Yeah. Well, that will be your interview, baby. I dare say wanu ni ho. Tiani ya. Geneva tau. That ni ame ba fra bron sama ko heaven. I wo ni ame ba jebron sama ba tano. That no me jia de. Hey. Hey, say.
Nonsense. I think if there is a God, I don't know if it's the one in the Bible, because that's a weird story. Is He's our Father, and we're His children. That's it. Our Father who art in heaven. Where's our mother? What happened to our mom? What did he do to our mom? Something happened. Somewhere in heaven there's a porch with a dead lady under it, and I want this. Proverbs, mommy, we know. Proverbs 18, 13. Dear Obua Asam, and Sana, why you moon she should mono? Where you Jimmy for? What I say? Dear Obua Asam, I dear what Tia Sam, dear what Tia Sam. Now, Obua and Sana, why you moon she should mono? Bible so ye Jimmy for Proverbs 13. Eh, sorry, 18 13. Proverbs 18 13. Christianity is a business. Yeah. Jesus is the product. Christians yeah. are the customers. Your prophet and your pastors are the beneficiaries. Yeah. Logic and common sense. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, greetings to all CSF guys, uh, anyone on this platform. Uh, I greet you and uh, we thank you for your support. We thank you for all you are doing to help this uh, CSF movement become great in Ghana. It's been a while since I've been online with uh, my Facebook blockings and things. Is, uh, it's not actually allowing me to be coming online often. Uh, mostly because I am doing this English language and my messages have been flagged all the time. But this is something that is still not stopping us from communicating with our people. Um, for, yeah, quick, Abel, I see you. Thank you. Please, when you come and share, you share. When you come and share the stream, I'm unable to share it because my account has a lot of limitations. And I don't know what to do. So please, when you come, you try your best and you share this video for me. Uh, there are a lot of issues happening in Ghana, okay? There are a whole lot of things I want to talk about this morning. But my main, my main point that I want to come and make this morning is how religion and politics is affecting our country. How religion and politics it's not making us think. Please, when you can hear me loud and clear, I don't know. I didn't check my setup well before coming. So you can type if the sound is okay so that I, I will know, okay? If the sound is not okay to you, let me know. Uh, and please, this is my page, African Youth Empowerment. My introduction message is this. I'm here doing English. That is the risk I have taken to convert the CSF messages the best form I can do into a language that the whole Africa can hear, or people who cannot speak most of our local dialect. I want to convert these messages in a way they can also hear and understand what CSF, what common sense family is all about, and our ideologies and our agendas that we are pushing into society. That is why I'll be doing this video strictly in English. So please, when you come here and you don't agree with me, I will always tell you, there are a whole lot of social media platforms out there. There are a lot of TV stations in Ghana this morning. They are showing a whole lot of things, okay? Please, when you come here and you think you don't agree with anything that I'm doing, I will kindly, kindly tell you or ask you to leave the platform for those who want to listen to be here. Even if there are two, three people here listening to what I say, I think it is beneficial than coming to distract the message with your nonsense ideology. So please, when you come and you don't agree with me, you are free to leave. I'm not forcing anyone to be here. There are a lot of social media platforms, there are a lot of TV stations, there are a lot of FM stations doing a whole lot of programs this morning. You can tune into any of them instead of coming here 
to listen to something that you think is nonsense and won't be beneficial to you. I'm just advising you not to waste your data in case. So when you come and you do like the message, you please kindly share the video for people to come and listen to what we have for them. We are in Ghana. We are in the campaign season. We are in the electoral year. Elections, we are about uh, four, five days. We are about five days from the general elections being held. Uh, I think the special elections were held about three days ago. Okay? There are a lot of issues happening up and down. We know Ghana is corrupt. We know all the politicians that are in Ghana, they are aiding corruption. They are aiding and abetting corruption. And even the good people that we think we know might be worse than the worst people. That is what is happening in Ghana. Now, for over months now, I've been on most radio stations and TV stations looking at how this whole political idea is being pushed on the citizens. I've been watching how the campaign is going, how our leaders are talking to the people, the things that they are doing in this short time. And I've been looking at everything. And the, 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 there is a place, there is a point where I got to and I realized, look, if we don't change our mentality, if we don't begin to reason, Ghana will still be at where it is today. And we will be saying these things over and over and over. And our children will come. Our children's children will also come and continue. And nothing will change. I've been on TV stations. Excuse me to say, as I'm here, the very big problem I have with Ghana politics is MPP and DC. To me, the biggest problem that we have in Ghana politics is MPP and DC because these people are just like husbands and wives. I've been telling you every time, MPP and DC, they are the same people. They are people who have come together and joined forces to rape mother Ghana. There is no difference between MPP and DC. They are just bears of the same feathers. They are like a husband and a wife. When they come, they, when, when uh, outwardly we see they are struggling, they are trying to do something. But when they go indoors, they are in bed with each other. And they have combined forces in order to rape this dear nation. And Ghana is weeping. Ghana is weeping in the hands of MPP and DC. Now, what is my problem? We voted a political party into power, okay? Immediately you are voted into power and you've gained the seat. This means your political party's ideologies is out of the way. Now you do not run a political party, but you are running a nation. We gave you four solid years. Even though with my, I, my kind of mentality, I know the way Ghana is, the extent of which Ghana is right now. There is no president that can magically revive Ghana within a period of four or eight years. It cannot be done. The current state of Ghana is not a state that could be revived with a period of four or eight years. And our leaders know this. They know it is not possible to revive Ghana in a period of four or eight years. But that is their politics that they play. So when you wanted to be voted into power, you come up with something that we call manifesto. Your manifesto is the ideologies. It's your plan. It's what you think you are coming to do for the country for the next four to eight years that you'll be in power. And this is what people are looking at in order to vote for you as a leader of a country. 
So you bring your plans to them, you bring your ideologies, the people look at the ideologies and they look, oh, okay, he said this, he said that, when he comes and he can do it, it's okay. So let's vote for him. Let's see if he can do it. Now, all this thing is available. That is why the youth, look, let me address this message to Common Sense family. Most CSF members have seen you into politics. Look, when you are awakened and you are still into the kind of politics we are doing in Ghana, I will tell you you are not awakened, but you are sleepwalking. Because every awakened person sees problems from a perspective and knows where problems come from and how they will be solved. So if you are a CSF member, you have the right to be part of a political party. You have the right to vote. But I'm still telling you, if you are still doing the kind of politics that is killing this country, and you call yourself an awakened person, I am here telling you, no, you are not awakened, you are sleepwalking. So this is it. Within a period of four years, your government came to power with a bunch of manifestos. Around the 2015 to 2016, when I listened to Akufado's campaign messages, I look at their manifesto, they were saying 50, uh, 57 factories to be completed by the end of 2017. They said a whole lot of things. One million, one million dollars per every district. One district, one factory. One village, one down. They gave you a whole bunch of promises. Now, it is another election year. If the president, if the leadership, are the people that are coming on television to tell you what they have done for Ghana, then I'm telling you they have failed. And you, the citizen, you are not reasoning. Because I do not need a presidential candidate. I do not need a political party to come and tell me what they have done for Ghana. No. If there was a change, if anything positive happened to Ghana, I am a citizen. I am a taxpayer. I use transportation. I buy food. I even buy water. I work on road. I would need to see the change for myself. I would need to see this change for myself. Why is it that in the period of campaigning, it is the political party that would come and advertise to you on TV what they have done for the country? Do you know this shows you are dumb? Yes. Excuse me, when I'm talking about political issues in Ghana, I am not going to be fair with some of the West. This completely tells you, you the citizen, you are dumb. You do not know anything. So after four years of being in power, the president will have to come and sit on a national television and tell you, I have done this, I have done that, I have done this, so vote for me. I do not need the president to tell me what he has done. I have to know what the president has done. You don't come and tell me what you have done. I am in the country. And I'm looking at things that are unfolding. I'm a businessman. I'm into business. I enter the business sector. I look at the improvements that have come there. Look, Monday is election. I'm doing this video to help the voter. The voter that is going to vote on Monday, I am doing this video to re-spark re your mind into thinking about something. Let me speak to you as a voter who has the power to elect and reject a president. So if you are sitting down for four solid years 
and the government is the one coming to tell you vote for me because of this because of that because i did this i feel that then i'm telling you the government and you yourself you have failed you have both failed the country i do not need the government to come and tell me what they have done and this is why they are deceiving Ghanaians. I've had the opportunity to be on this voter road, the voter road from Accra to Hawaii. I have done, had the opportunity to be on it this very week. And I've seen certain things for myself. You get to places where the government have built this kind of white shelter canopies. And they have named the thing one district, one factory. What they are doing on television is this. The government have successfully edited videos of existing factories that are processing foods. And they have embedded it into their empty structures and telling you they have built factories. And because the citizens are dumb, they are not investigating. They are not looking up to what the person has done. They are not seeing it for themselves. So they will watch the television and go and vote. I said I was on the road of voter just three days ago. And I saw a lot of these shelters on the way. When you enter, there is nothing there. There is nothing. It's just an empty shelter. But they, they embed these empty places into, into videos, into already existing factories. Then they bring them online to propagate to you, we have built this factory and we have done that and we have done this. Whilst on the ground, nothing is happening. Whilst on the ground, nothing is happening. I went there, I saw most of this thing, and I started weeping for Mother Ghana. So if you are a voter, if you are a citizen, and you expect that within the period of four years, the government should be the one coming to tell you what they have done. No. The government, you, I don't need you, the government, to tell me what you have done for Ghana. No. I am alive. And if there is a change in Ghana, I know it by myself. This is why you are being deceived with edited videos. And I blame our media stations. Our media stations are part of the big problem that we have in the entire continent of Africa. The African media. The Ghanaian media. Why? Because today, it is only politicians and pastors who are owning TV stations and radio stations. The radio station that you are listening to every morning, it was built by a politician and he is running his politics on the radio station. They are not telling you the truth. That is the problem of the media in Ghana. And when you rise up and you want to be neutral, either you cannot get employment or you will die very quick. When you rise up and you want to be neutral, either you don't get employment or they will kill you very quick. And the media has perpetrated this act with the politicians they give them their platform to use in order to deceive the people they use their platform to deceive the majority of Ghanaians look if you're a citizen and you care about your country let me tell you how to vote Today, I am here to educate you when you are going to vote, how you vote, what you look at before you vote. At the simple, every leadership, 
every government that comes into power must affect your own life. Every government that comes to power must affect your life. You are the voter. So when you are going to vote, you look at yourself and how the government have been beneficial to you before you go and cast your vote. If I, I, I am a citizen and I live in a suburb in Accra, okay? I live in a suburb in Accra and I am going to vote for the president. I'm going to vote for someone because this person showed me an advert of what they have done in Bodriase. If I am going to vote for a president, because the president is rather showing me what he has done in a place that I cannot see with my eye, then I have failed. Then I have failed my country. I have failed my country because the change that the president, the person is talking about did not affect me. So I am going to vote based on belief. I am going to vote because yes, they saw they showed this advert on TV where the president have built a hospital in a different town. Whilst in my neighborhood, I don't have the same hospital. I do not have water. I do not have electricity. I do not have good roads. There are no schools. So when you are going to vote, you look at yourself, you look at your neighborhood, you look at your environment, and you vote based on what you have seen. Don't vote based on what people are telling you. If you are doing that, then you are doing exactly what Akufuado said. In 2016, when Nana Dodanko Akufuado was swear in, he said something. He said, do not be spectators, but be what? Citizens. Don't be a spectator, be a citizen. So if you are going to vote because someone told you the president have done something somewhere that I'm telling you, you the voter, you have failed your nation. You have failed Madagana because you are not going to vote based on the change that you have seen in your life. You are going to vote based on what someone have told you. This is Ghana politics. And now, because they know this strategy, it's not going to work for a very long period of time, they use the next thing that Ghanaians are still dumb off. Religion. Yes. This is the time you see the politicians and the pastors and the imams in your community, they are one. This is the time that the MP in your community is in unison with your church, is in one accordance with your pastor. This is the time they are roaming around in the churches, lying to people and the church because of the religiosity mentality, because of that damn mentality, we follow them blindly. So, four years after your MP have failed to do anything in your community, your MP comes to visit your pastor to convince you to vote for him. And immediately your pastor says this, this is what you are going to do. Why? Ghana. Why? So, after the election, when the person comes to power and the person starts failing, you still don't use your mind. You still don't use your brain. You still don't use the app, the sophisticated app in your head to analyze situations. Then your pastor comes forward and your pastor tells you, oh, God's time is the best. Oh, the politicians are doing their best, but God has yet is here to throw his stone. When God decides to cast the stone, Ghana will improve. 
then you shift all your problems from your leader and you send it to the church. This is what you are going to do. For four years now, Ghanaians have been in church praying for development of Ghana instead of putting pressure on the leaders to do something better for this country. For four years now, Ghanaians are sitting in churches waiting for God to do a miracle. Once they forget that they voted for people who are supposed to employ them, people who are supposed to give them good health care, people who are supposed to give them better education. So for four years, we shift our blame from the leaders that use the pastors to lie to us, and now we take our problems and we send them to God. Yes. So after the politician has won the power from you, he will tell you it is in the hands of God. After the politician, after you voted, after you wasted your time in queues to vote for the politician, when they now come to power, they will tell you if God permits, everything will be okay. But when they are campaigning, they do not tell you God is the one coming to construct your road. God is the one coming to build your factories. God is the one coming to give you employment. But because you want to remain dumb, because you do not want to use your brain, they will use the same thing to lie to you over and over again. And every time the black man will be the victim of the same thing. These are the things raping mother Ghana. Politics and religion. Politics and religion. These are the things raping mother Ghana and Africa as a whole. Why? Because it is the same strategy. The same politicians invented the religion to keep people under control. Religion was invented to keep you under control. Once you are afraid of something, you cannot reason with your brain. Because I always tell you the greatest battles of this world is not the battles that were fought with guns and missiles or machetes. The greatest battles are the battles that are fought with the brain. It is about mental conquering. Who he who conquers your brain has won the battle. So this is what the politicians and your religious leaders are doing to you over and over again. And they will keep doing it until you decide to start reasoning. Because they know when they deceive you in Ghana, in Ghana right now, you can do anything that you like. Okay? In Ghana, in Ghana today, you can do anything you like. Just attach the name of God to it. You can do any foolish thing that you think is okay by you. Just attach the name of God to it and you are free to go. Yes, that is why. When this girl, what is his name? A Piapim Polo celebrated her birthday and she took a naked picture in front of her son. The gender minister had to call this girl for her to come and sign the bond. For to behave well in society. I'm jogging your memory. That is what they did to a Kriapim Polo. Because she did not attach the name of God to what they, her act. She was called. There is a musician called Waisa. He played a song, A Kikimi. She, he was on stage performing when he removed his boxer shot. He was invited by the police. Why? Because why, sir, did not say it was God who directed him to remove his boxer shorts.
Kofi Aduma sat on his television program, Kofi Aduma, Kofi TV, and predicted what Nanado will come to say in his next address to Ghanaians. He was invited by BNI. He was invited by the National Security. Why? Because Kofi Aduma did not attach the name of God to what he said. So in Ghana, you can do anything and be free. Just make sure you attach the name of God. That is why we have a naked pastor walking on the streets of Ghana, showing his nakedness to children and teens. Because the pastor has read Isaiah chapter 20. And Isaiah did it for how many years in the Bible? So the pastor is repeating what Isaiah did. And Ghanaians are quiet because this time the pastor is doing it in the name of God. How dumb can we be as, as people? In the name of God, you have a prophet like Owusu Bempa who would go and sit on a national television, who would sit on a national radio and insult the person that can feed his entire extended family. Owusu Bempa can sit everywhere and use the name of God to insult people. Because he uses the name of God, he is untouchable. Try it and see. You just try what Owusu Bempa did, what Owusu Bempa is doing to Mahama in this country. Try it as a normal person and see what will happen to you. So in the name of God, you can kill. In the name of God, you can commit any crime and you will be free. That is why you hear a pastor sitting on live television and telling you, I killed a pregnant woman for rituals. I killed someone's baby for rituals when I was in this. But today I have repented. Then they allow, they are allowed. Why? Because they use the name of God. So in the name of God in Ghana today, you can commit any foolish act and you go scot free. This is what is happening in Ghana. Religion and politics have combined together and is destroying this country. And yet, the most useless council ever set up in Ghana is Christian Council. Not only them. The Christian Council and the traditional council of Ghana, they are the most useless councils that have ever been set up in Ghana because I do not know what they do. In the name of politics, in the name of religion, you can do anything in Ghana and you will be free. I was doing a video and I had a call. Someone called me to actually warn me about the video that I was doing. And the person said, if you want to be free doing this video, attach yourself to people in power. Yes. So I realized it's two things. Either I become part of a political party in order to protect myself, or I claim I have been called and ordained by God. Because these are the only two licenses you have to mess up in Ghana. Look at what pastors are doing to people. Look at what pastors have turned Ghana into. Pastors have turned Ghana into zoo. They are treating people like animals. Why? Because it is in the name of God. Because they are doing it in the name of God. When the name of God is mentioned, every person becomes dumb. So the black man hates everything about slavery unless the slave God that was brought to them. The black man, they hate everything about slavery. Unless the slave God that was brought to them, 
the gods that were used to come and enslave them is what they have embraced to today. So physically, the black man is not into slavery, but mentally, the black man has been enslaved for eternity. Because you took off the chains physically, but mentally, the chains are still there. Mentally, we are still damned. We are down to the extent where we cannot reason at people anymore. And someone has to be somewhere to direct us like the sheep. No wonder the Bible calls us the sheep. We are sheep. Because sheep need to be directed every time. Otherwise, they will even lose track and lose their home. This is the problem of Ghana. Politics and religion. Christianity. Christianity. The Islam religion. Look at what Islam is doing in northern Nigeria. Look at what Muslims have turned on northern Nigeria into. When you talk, they will tell you, those people, they are not Islamic. Those people, they are not Muslim. Uh, they are extremists. My people, when are you going to wake up? When are you going to wake up those, from this mentality that someone brought you a book and the person told you they are the chosen people of God based on a book they brought you written in their language? And you became fools. You became slaves in the name of a book. You became idiots. In the name of a book written in someone's language by the person telling you once upon a time we were the chosen people of God. In order for you to know God, come and follow our ways. And the religion was created by the same politicians who are governing you. So where there is politics, there must be religion. We started talking about this cathedral thing. That is why I'm telling you, if you're a common sense family member, and you're a CSF member, and you are still following politics the way you were, then you are still not awakening, but you are sleepwalking. And that one is far more dangerous. To be sleepwalking is far more dangerous than lying in your bed. So if you think you are awakening, and you are still following this politics, this kind of politics in Ghana, I'm telling you, you are far away from awakening. You are sleepwalking. Because the politics we do in this country is not a politics that is meant to help the country, but to break the country. Every blessed day when you wake up in Ghana, there is a case of corruption. Every blessed day when you wake up in Ghana, there is a case of corruption. There is a case of money scam. There is a case of fraud. Every blessed day in Ghana, there is a case. Last time, when I was watching live, when the GCB bank in Kantamantu was burning, people were looking at the flames, and I was just like, Ghana is in trouble. Yes, I knew what I, I said by Ghana was in trouble because I know that something has happened. A great money has been lost. That is the cover up. That is the cover up. They will steal the money and they will destroy property to cover it up. Ghanaians, when are you going to start using your brains? For God's sake, this is the age of information. You've gone to all the schools. You have the university degrees. You speak all the big, big English. You are still dumb mentally. Because you cannot think. You cannot think. That is why a 65-year-old man who has spent almost 60 years of his life 
in a church has sat down for a 25 year old boy to complete a bible school for another six months and is now educating the 65 year old man on how to read and understand the bible because why the 65 year old man is dumb i said this if i have spent 20 years of my life in a church and I need someone who have completed Bible school in three months to come and continue teaching me the meaning of the Bible, then I am dumb, then I am sick. So I go to church and I see the old men in the church and you ask them, how long now have they been in church? Someone have been in church for 50 years. Someone have been in church for 60 years, some 30. Some have been in church for 20 years. Yet, they could never finish understanding the Bible that every time they need a young person, 20 years, 18 years, 22 years, to complete a six-month Bible course and come and teach them how to read and understand the Bible. Whilst that 70-year-old man should be the one advising that 22-year-old guy about life. You are dumb. That is why with all your university degrees, as a Muslim, you still think you need a sheikh. You still think you need an imam to explain the holy book to you. The fact that you cannot think quite God's message can only be explained to you by a human being and not yourself. You are dumb. The brain is not working. God brought you a message. And the only way you can understand the message God brought you is that the message be explained to you by your own fellow human being that drink and sleeps like you. Means your brain is still not functioning. So we tell you religion was invented by man man created the religion and man is wrote the books that is why man is explaining the book man created the religion so man continue explaining the book look at aquesia look at that aquesia look at this man look at aquesia cannot define the word common sense. Aquasia work cannot even explain the meaning of common sense. Go to the church of this man. You have doctorate degree holders. You have PhD degree holders sitting in the church of this man who cannot define common sense to teach them sense. How can a nation move on with such people in the nation? Last time I was watching the video of Akwesiewa and he was asking his co uh, uh, partner what is the meaning of common sense. And the partner came to tell him common sense means someone who doesn't have sense. Common sense means low sense. And I said, Are you serious? Are you serious? So this pastor has been in Christianity, has been preaching for how many years now, and does not even know how to define a simple common sense. What do you think this man is teaching you out of the Bible? What do you think he understands in the Bible that he's teaching you? Yet you see a doctor, you see an engineer in the church of Akwesia Wa sitting down for Akwesia Wa to teach them sense. The one who cannot define common sense is teaching you sense. Are you are you are you serious at all? Are you not crazy? Are you not crazy? Look at Obinim. Look at the palm wall. What do these people know? What do they 
know at all in life that they can teach you. So there are some kind of people when I see them on Facebook and they think education is about speaking English. Education is about holding a bunch of A4 sheet in hand and calling it certificate and I start laughing. Because upon all this education, they are still dumb. They are dumb because you go to the hospital in Ghana, you go and meet a professional doctor who will tell you, uh, this, this sickness there, let's pray to God. Yes. You go and meet a professional doctor in a Ghanaian hospital that you have sent your problem to, and this doctor will tell you, ask for this sickness unless God will. The power is in the hands of God. We are dumb. We are sick. We are sick. Nothing at all in this country can work until our mentality has been fully restored. We need a change of mentality. That is why I've seen most of our CSF brothers some of them who are thinking what we are doing and saying is not important and we need to hit the ground and we need to demonstrate. I've said it every time. Ghana, we need a revolution. But it is up to the kind of revolution we need. You need a change of mentality. That is the kind of revolution we need. Because if the mentality does not change, do whatever demonstration for people to die. Let the whole people die. The people who come and take over are coming over with the same mentality and nothing is going to change. So yes, we need a revolution, but we need mental revolution. That is the most important thing. You need mental revolution. You don't need that kind of revolution with matches and guns in your arms. You are just going to die for nothing. Because Inkuma tried it. Inkuma did it. Why do you think the works of Inkuma could not continue? The words could not continue because deep inside the brain, the people was not still revolved. Because they fought a physical revolution and they forgot about the mental revolution. When mindset of the people does not change, it is the same dumb people. It is the same stupid people that you are going to put in power every time and the same stupid things will continue. So my brothers and sisters, we need revolution. The kind of revolution we need is not the ones that is going to cost our lives, but the ones that are going to change our mindset. All we need is a change of mindset. That is the mental revolution that we need. And until we start to see the need and importance of revolving our mind, how we have been programmed from the beginning. We need to restart the brain and start thinking differently. Jerry tried it. How many coups did Jerry did not do? Jerry led three coups in Ghana. Was it not a revolution? Why did he lead the coup? Because the system was not working. And he made a coup. Why do you think the system is still broken today? Because it was a physical revolution and it was not a mental one. So the same mentality continued. And that is what is in our leaders today. So until we train our children to be mentally sound, nothing will change. Nothing is going to change. Stop telling your children that there is a sky god somewhere. There is some place built in the sky that is called heaven that they are going to go. And this world is not their home. They are just passers by. Start training your children to be patriotic. Start 
training your children on how to sacrifice themselves for their country. Stop telling your children about the sky daddy and the imaginary gold rolls in somewhere. Stop this. Enough of this mentality. Your great grandmother told your great grandmother that Jesus was coming soon. Your great grandmother came to tell your grandmother Jesus was coming soon. Your grandmother told your mother Jesus is coming soon. And today, your mother told you Jesus is coming soon. And you are also telling your children Jesus is coming soon. Can't you reason? Can't you think? Can't you think? We have serious problems in this country. When the youth of this country wakes up, all they think about is fleeing their country. They want to go and find greener pastures somewhere. Our youths are dying on the Mediterranean. They are dying in the desert. These wicked Arabians are killing our people every blessed day. They are killing and torturing them. You think there is a change? You think Ghana's problem can be solved by MPP, NDC? You think there is a God somewhere sitting in the sky who is waiting to start reviving companies, to start constructing roads from scratch? You are sick in your brain. You are sick. If that is your mentality. I said, we need revolution. We need revolution in Africa and Ghana. The kind of revolution that we need, we've needed for this so long. Thanks to common sense family. Thanks to Abraham Ben Moshe. The revolution is now working because we need a restart of our brains. When you are children, your mother told you, don't go down the closet. There is a monster there. Don't go down the closet. There is a monster there. You have grown up at the age of 50. You still think there is a monster down the closet. So you still don't go down there. That means your brain is still not working. So when our leaders when our educated people, the people who call them the elite in society, they call themselves the elite in society, immediately they enter that room that is called church. They become dumb in the brain. Because it was that same church that they were told from childhood that there is a monster in the basement. So every time they enter that church, they remain dumb. So no wonder the whole Ghana is being run by religion. When this cathedral issue popped up in Ghana, I, I, I made a lot of videos and I was talking about it. People came to bash me that it was not important. You see where it is leading to? So I remember someone called my program and told me the government is not using the government of Ghana money. The government is not using Ghana's money to build a cathedral. It's a fund that he has been raised. People came to my video and they were challenging me. No, 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 no. The government does not, it's not using Ghana's money to build a cathedral. And I told them, you do not raise him. You see, today it has happened. Today, the government has put down a short code for the citizens to do donate towards building a cathedral. Today, the government has come up with a short code, dial star 79 star on your mobile phone to donate to help the government build a cathedral after the hundred million dollars fund that they went to raise outside for the cathedral, the hundred million dollars could not build this cathedral. They now want the citizens to donate to us building the cathedral. 
If you think I am lying, if you are in Ghana, just take your phone, dial star seven nine star. There was star seven nine hash. Nine seven nine hash on your phone. Dial it and see. Donate to us building a cathedral. Are you dumb? Are you okay? Are you not sick? I said it that this cathedral building will still involve us putting state money. How did they start happening? They had to eject all the judges that were living in their bungalows at cantonments. Do you know till then, the judges are still sleeping in five, four-star hotels. That bills are being paid every month. Ghanaians, look, it's a free world. Though. Information is out there and it is free. And we will tell you what the media will not tell you. And we will tell you what the media has failed to tell you. I said they ejected the lawyers and most of the government workers who were living in the bungalows in Cantonment. They evicted them in order to construct the cathedral. So they had to find a place for these people to go and stay. And I'm telling you, most of the judges are staying in four-star, five-star hotels in Ghana where bills are being paid every month out of the taxpayers' money. Out of the taxpayers' money. And now the $100 million fund, but it's not enough to build a cathedral. So the government have now come up with an idea of a short code for the citizens of this country to donate towards building a cathedral. Whilst in our villages, people don't have clean water. People don't have classroom. People don't have hospitals. We want to talk about Ghana, you start crying. When you want to talk about Ghana, you will start crying. The government cannot solicit it for fun to build hospitals and schools. Why? Because of religiosity. Because the government knows my people love God. So in order to impress them, let me build a cathedral for God and they will vote for me. And they have used your mumu mentality to trick you into helping them build a cathedral. Whilst there is your grandmother is in a village that do not have clean water to drink. How much does a borehole cost in Ghana? How much does a borehole cost in Ghana? Between 8,000 to 10,000 Ghana CD. You can get a, very, a good borehole with a clean drinking water. The government went to solicit it for fun for $100 million to build a cathedral while people are drinking brown water. There are some villages you go, when you see the water they drink, look, milo and milk is better. The water is so thick and brown. And in your brain you think the government using $100 million to build a cathedral is a good thing. That is why I'm telling you, you have been programmed wrongly. And until you have a mental revolution, there is nothing that will change in this country. Nothing will change. Your government will keep deceiving you. They will come. MPP, NDC. They will intermarry each other. Their children will continue to lead you. And their children will come with the same mentality that their fathers left for them. And they will use this mentality and they will continue to lead you. And the poor man will always be poor. The poor man will forever be poor. So my brothers, CFians, CSF people, I'm telling you this. If you say you are awakened, you need to be awakened at every side of your life. Awaken does not mean stop going to church. The meaning of awakening does not mean you stop going to church. The awakening should reflect in your life, in your daily activity. Whatever you do, wherever you step forward, people might see you and see you awaken. 
Awakening is not only about stop going to church or stop being a Muslim. Awakening is not only about stop believing in the Bible and the Quran. Awakening should affect every side of your life politically, socially. If you don't show this to people that you are awakening, then I'm telling you, I don't care who you are, I'm telling you, you are sleepwalking. You are sleepwalking. Because awakening is a very big stage. And CSF people, there are a lot of people who are confused within the awakening message. Awakening is a broad concept. Awakening is a very broad area in life. This is how you are going to see awakening. Everyone will be experts at their own field. Some people are awakening and they know how to influence politics. We give it to them. Some people are awakening and they know how to talk about technology. We leave it for them. Some people are awakened and they know how to talk of religion. We leave it for them. Some people are awakened and they know how to address social issues. We leave it for them. Why? We combine all into one motherhood. All becomes one. That is awakening. So awakening should affect every side of your life. Awakening is not only about you knowing John 3.16 is a lie. Awakening is not only about knowing uh, 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 Quran 9.39 or Quran 9.29 is not a good thing. Reflect the awakening in your life. You are waking and you are still hiding in the shadows. You are waking and you are still a hypocrite. You are awakening and you see a problem right in front of you and you still cannot address it. That is not awakening. That is what I call sleepwalking. My people, it's time to help Mother Ghana. It's time to save Ghana from these rapists, religion and politics. It's time we save Mother Ghana from these rapists. And it is you and I that can do this. So I am telling you, you need a mental revolution. We do not need war. We need mental revolution. Change your mind. When you can change your mindset, you can train the upcoming generation with a different mindset. That is where we will see change. Because it is simple. Someone reads the land. Someone clears it. Someone sows the seed. And someone waters the seed. And someone looks after the plant to grow. And someone comes to cultivate it. And someone enjoys it. If you understand these steps, this process that I have given you, let me repeat it. I said someone reads the land. Someone clears it. Someone comes to sow the seed. Someone waters the seed to grow up root into a plant. Someone takes care of this plant. Someone cultivates the food. And someone enjoys it. It's simple. We have seen it in America and we have seen it in Europe. They are now okay where they are because of the toil and suffering of their ancestors. That is why the white man is training their children to be heroes and the black man is there training their children to be pastors. We have been brainwashed with our media, our school, our education. Last time, someone was saying, eh, the problem is not religion. The problem is our mindset. 
The problem is not religion. The problem is our mindset. And I ask the person, where do we get the mindset? Where do we get the mindset that we have? Right in our homes, it's, it's either you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. You have been trained up. You have been brought up in a Christian or in an Islamic home with a Christian or Islamic doctrine. In our schools, it's either the school is an Islamic school or a Christian school. So you are being brought up in a Christian way or in a Christ, uh, or in an Islamic way from home and from school. The community that we are part of, we have Christians and Muslims who are in the community, who makes up the community. So right from home, school, church, mosque. That is how the African child grows up. So if the African child grows up and the mindset is wrong, meaning it is the programming, you can't get this. You can't get this. While the white man is training their children to be inventors of things, the black man is training their children to be consumers of the things that are being invented because we are lazy people and we will not think about invention because this world is not our home because we have a better place than this world and we will not think about making this world better we are focused on going to heaven and we are still suffering and the people who brought you the book in which heaven is are the same people helping you that is why they control you That is why they are still controlling you. The greatest kind of an African child is thinking there is a land, there is a place that is better than this continent, Africa. The greatest crime of an African child is thinking there is a place somewhere that is better than this continent that you are part of. That is the brainwash. That is the programming. This is why we are still where we are. And I told you last time that your imams, your pastor, your prophet, your sheikh, they are a representative of the slave master's ideologies. They have been led to make sure the slave master's ideology continues with both your politicians and your religious leaders are making sure these ideas continue. That is why you think your history started from slavery. That is why you think your history started from slavery. You do not know where you come from. How do you know where you are going? If you do not know where you come from, how do you know where you are going? Black man knew about civilization before the coming of the white man. They told you your ancestors lived in cave. It was not true. Go back and research. The black history does not start from the time that the white man discovered Africa. There was blinds before the coming of the white man. Think, use your brain. Research. In this age, knowledge is free. Information is free. Take your time. Take your time. Please focus your life on things that you can see rather than things that you cannot see. The one who brought you a book and told you there is a place somewhere in the sky, the place is called heaven, Ajana, or whatsoever. When you die and you go there, you walk on gold. When you die and you go there, you'll be given 72 virgins. Are you foolish? Can't you think that you are an Ashanti guy? 
You came from Obuasi. You walk on gold every blessed day in your life. You are not a person. You come from Isuta. You come from all this area. You walk on diamonds every blessed day in your life. Can't you use your head? And now you have been brainwashing to thinking that that one is fallacy. But there is some up where, somewhere that God, who I don't know, who brought this idea and presented it to you that take, don't focus your life on this earth. When you die, there is a better earth after here. Focus your life there. Now you leave your world to rot. You leave your world to rot. But you see, whilst the person was giving you this message, the person forgot to tell you that you'll be living behind descendants. You'll be living behind children. And therefore, you need to prepare your back well for them. Whilst they were telling you this earth is not your home, they forgot you came to this world with genitals of which you are coming to reproduce. And you are going to leave behind people. Therefore, make this world a better place for them. And that became the greatest downfall of our people. That we do not see the importance of this earth. But we rather think there is some earth, there is a place better than this from here. That no one has gone to come back to tell you, oh, I died and I went to work, work on that goal. That is why a normal thinking person thinks he will die and he will be rewarded with 72 women. Whilst you are alive, in this life, can you stay with 10 women? A normal thinking person with a brain in their head have gone to school, have doctorate degree, have PhD, no whatsoever, studied whatsoever. They sit down today and tell you when they die, they will be rewarded with 72 women. Because of this, they will take knives and slaughter people. Because of this, they will take knives and slaughter, kill people. Because they want to go and marry 72 women. Because this world is not their home. Because they are going to walk on gold in the sky somewhere. So they will not do anything better for this earth. So the Bible, the book that they read tells them, rather arrange your properties in heaven. For in heaven there is there are no armed robbers and thieves. Are you okay? You come back and you tell me you are educated. Someone will come to your video and ask you, what do you know? Upon your education, you believe once upon a time, a man married 700 women and had 300 concubines. You tell me you are educated. Upon all your knowledge, upon your, your, all your wisdom, upon all your education, you believe a man flew to the seventh heaven on a donkey. Came back and negotiated a prayer in the seventh heaven and brought it to you. And you think you are wise and you think you are knowledgeable and there are some people who are also on social media they will tell you religion is not a problem but i am not religious and religion is not our problem media i am not religious i'm not part. if religion is not our problem why are you not part of the religion my brothers and sisters i said Africa, we need revolution. We don't need a genocide that happened in Libya. We don't need a genocide that happened in Rwanda. We don't need any genocide. What we need is mental revolution. If we do not change our mentality, Africa will go nowhere. Today, Paul Kagame is doing a lot with his mindset. You know my fear for Rwanda. If Paul Kagame should be no more today, 
Does the people of Rwanda have the mental capability con to continue the good works that he is doing? That is what I'm telling you. It is about mental revolution. When Pokagami is in public, where he is speaking, you see the knowledge is coming from his brain. You see that he sees things differently. He thinks differently. Why? Because he has already had a change of mentality. This is our problem. This is what we need. So Ghanaians, it is election time. Use your brain and not what you've been told. Vote according to what you have seen. Look at your life and look at the changes and go and vote according to it. Don't vote because of MPP, NDC. They are the same bunch of people. They go to all the dinners together. They are intermarrying their children. Their children will continue to grow and control your mumu mentality. Have a change of mindset. Have a change of mindset. Have a change of mindset. This is what is happening. And please, I am begging you. A pastor will come and sit on TV and tell you, let's pray to God to select the right leader. Please, there is no God anywhere selecting leaders for you. You have to go and vote and select your leader. God does not select leaders. When they told you the voice of the people is the voice of God and you are still looking for God, then I'm telling you, you are foolish and you are dumb. When they told you the voice of the people is the voice of God, and you are still waiting for God to come and do something, then I'm telling you, you do not think, but you are damp. Your brain has frozen up. Look, we are not here looking for popularity. I am not on social media to gain popularity. I tell people, I am not on social media to look for money. I do well where I am. I feed people. I am a breadwinner. I am a family head. You understand? My problem is I love my country to the extent where I can't keep quiet anymore. It is because of the love for my country. And I tell people all the time, these things that I'm doing on social media, I do it more when I am outside. I do it more. The change that I want, I have started a change from my own village. I started a change from my home. I did not start a change on social media. Do same. Train your family. Change the religiosity ideas in your family. Change the mental problem of your family members. Don't come to social media to gain popularity. Love your country. We have had opportunity to travel out of this country, go and live our life somewhere, and also be okay. For the love of my country, I decided to remain here and fight for this country. It's rather unfortunate we are not we are no longer training our children to be patriotic. I told you we are training our children to be consumers. We are training our children to be consumers instead of inventors. Instead of producers, our children can only consume. If you think I'm lying, go and ask your grandfather, grandmother, how many factories did Nkrumah left before he died? And how many of the factories are still surviving? Because we cannot reproduce. We cannot produce. We consume everything to the extent that we add the foundations of the factories. Yes. 
Because when you can only consume and not produce, very soon the food that you eat will finish. And I'm speaking, I'm speaking in quotes. If you are unable to produce what has been left for you, you will consume it and it will finish. And you'll be left with the, the building and you have to start consuming the foundation and the blocks of the building. That is what we did. We sold most of them to foreigners. After we finished consuming everything in it, we sold it to foreigners. We left some to rot in the bush. Train your children to be patriotic. There is no heaven anywhere. Let me tell you this. There is no heaven and hell anywhere. All these things are states of mind. They are states of life that happens to you before you die. It happens to you. You have all these experiences in life before you die. You do not know where you come from. How do you know where you are going? So you sat down and someone brought you a book written in this language and told you, I am the chosen people of God. And you accepted it. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? So whilst the person was telling you there is a sky heaven somewhere, focus your life in gold and go there and walk on gold, you lift up your head and you are looking into the sky and the person was taking your natural resources, taking your minerals and building the heaven at his place. Today you die to be in America. Go and see black children dying to cross the Mediterranean. About last two weeks, you look at the number of dead bodies that wash the shore of the Mediterranean. There is no white man child in it. Do you think a white man's child will suffer themselves to cross the Mediterranean to come to Africa? Why would a white man's child suffer to cross the Mediterranean to get into Africa? Go and see the black children. Because after they gave you a book that told you there was heaven somewhere in the sky, you now die go to this heaven and the heaven was built with the things that you were already sitting on the heaven was built with the things that you already had europe and america was built by the things they've got from africa france was made france by africa and france is still being made france by africa Yet that is where we die to go. But when it comes to our own, we think there is a place in the sky that is better than here. And that is where we want to die and go. Any pastor who is sitting in church, taking money from people and still preaching this heaven and hell nonsense to them, I'm telling you, you are, you are not mentally okay. You are mentally deranged. You are mentally deranged. The earth is what we have. Africa is what we have. Let us fight in making this place a better place. Let's save our children from, from turning the Mediterranean into a graveyard. The Mediterranean is a graveyard. When there is anything spirituality, most of them can be found in the shores and under the Mediterranean because the number of black dead bodies that sea has consumed, I'm telling you, it's too much. It's too much. I've done about an hour and 30 minutes. I want, I want to put the link. If you want to come, if you want to come and say anything, I'm posting my link. I'm tired. I'm not even well. I'm sick. I'm even in mourning too. But I'm still here speaking for my country. That is the passion. That is the love that we have from where we come from. That is the love that I have for my skin. The love that I have for myself and my country. Please, if you have anything to say, 
you can follow the link join me here i'll pick you say something to your people Ghanaians must desist themselves from this religiosity nonsense and the kind of politics that is destroying this country and we are not stopping you see we cannot have enough i don't care i told you already it's my data it's my computer it's my electricity it's my time i can choose to be here and be talking the whole day because we want to see change africa is all that we got do not think there is any place that is better than your home build it rome was not built in a day the america and the europe that you are dying to go was not built by angel michael it was not built by angel gabriel you spend thousands of dollars every year on a pilgrimage to arabia in order to kiss a stone go around the stone and come back to africa then you leave the money there and they are developing their country with it and yet they do not love you why because they are telling you you are a fool and you have accepted to be a fool yes if you spend three thousand dollars every year to go to a pilgrimage in mecca just to go around a stone and kiss it and come back home you leave that money for the arabians to develop their country yet you go there and do, do not accept you my brother good morning yeah, yeah good morning uh, livestone uh, greetings to everyone on on this platform uh, my brother, I just call in to, you know, just say a little bit of what you are saying. And what I will tell you is you are just doing a good job. This your message just touched my heart this morning. This this message must go viral. So if you are on this platform, please just try to share this video. Because our brother has speak, he has spit a lot of wisdom out there. That needs to be here by our fellow Ghanaians. So if you are here, just try to share the video and then let's move on. I know with the help of this, this group of people that we are having called CSF, I think Ghana will, will change some few years to come. My brother, uh, if you sit down and you think about how Ghanaians or the entire Africa use their brain, how they think, how they see this continent they they they, they were brought out they, they were brought up in it's it it's it, it, it is very sad because they don't they don't even know that Africa is their home and they have to make that home a better place for themselves and their generations to come. You see. If you are a person and you don't think of tomorrow and you think of today, then excuse me for my words, you are such a foolish person. Because let's just imagine our forefathers, our, our great grandmothers and fathers told our great grandmothers that there is a sky god who is coming to destroy this world some years to come so we don't have to you know concentrate on on the good things on this world we have to fight for our 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 soul we have to fight for the soul to get us a place called heaven so our 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 mothers their their mothers did a big mistake and they did not do a better thing for us that will benefit the, 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 the their generations they just did a lot of mistakes. They were dead and gone. They are dead and gone. Our mothers also steps on the footsteps of their, uh, their, their, their grandmothers and their grandfathers doing the same mistakes. They are also about to die and go. Some of them, some of us, our parents are no more alive. They are dead and gone. We are also giving birth to our children. 
we are continuously giving them this mentality, telling them that, no, look, this country, Ghana, or this, this continent, Africa, that we, we were born in, some days are coming, which the God who created this, this beautiful planet will come and destroy this planet. So we don't have to worry ourselves and, you know, help developing the country. Let's move on with our life. The best thing we can do is to go to church, go to mosque, pray to that God to give us, to, 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 to you know, give us wisdom about his ways. He should, he should help us, giving us pastors, imams in Ghana so that they will teach us the, uh, that God word so that we will work on the ways of that God. And let's forget about the Ghana or the, the Africa as a continent we were born in. We don't need develop. We don't need to develop Ghana. We don't need to develop. We don't need to worry ourselves to develop Africa. But where we must concentrate is a sky city called heaven. So we have to concentrate on that sky city. Let's build the city for ourselves. So when we are dying, or when this God come and destroy this planet, He will give us that city so that we will enjoy there. But here there is no better. We don't have to look for enjoyment. We don't have to look for happiness on this planet. And this is, you know, it is, it is, it is the most foolish ideas that we Africans are having now. And that is the, that is the great thing, or that is the most dangerous thing that is impeding the progress of Africa. Because if this world doesn't belong to me, I am just a stranger. I am just passing by. So as a stranger, as a stranger who is passing by in a city or in a certain country, why should I worry myself, you know, to help the people living in that country or in that city to develop it? I have to concentrate on my journey. After, I, after the days that I am coming to spend in that city is up, I will continue my journey and go to my destination. So this country or this world or this, our country, Ghana, is, is just a passing by city for some people. The majority of Ghanaians, 90% of Ghanaians are just strangers in the country. So they are not concentrating, the, concentrating on the development of Ghana. So each of them will tell their, their children that, Look, Ghana is just a passing by country. We are, not, we are not citizens of Ghana. We are just strangers. We are not citizens, citizens from this planet, but we are citizens from a certain planet called heaven. But we are just coming to pass by. So let's forget about the, the development of Ghana and let's move on. Just look at how this, these politicians are doing to our, uh, our, our, our motherland Ghana. They don't give a damn to the civilians. They don't give a damn. You know, they don't give a damn. They don't give a damn to the civilians. They don't care about the development of Ghana. What they only want or what they only need from us it's when it is time for voting, we will go and vote for them. And they have seen that majority of Ghanaians, their mentality or their way of thinking, you have to attach it by that says the Lord. So as, 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 as a president of Ghana, you have to be either a Christian or a Muslim so that he will do something that will, that will make the Muslims happy. He will do something that will make the Christians happy so that when the election time is, is you know, when the election time is up, they will come and help vote for him. And majority of Ghanaians, if you ask them development and building church or mosque, which one? Let me put it this way. When, when a government or a president asks majority of Ghanaians two options, that I want to build a cathedral. I am a Christian. I want to build church. I want to build churches for 
every district in Ghana, and I want to build a factory for every district in Ghana, which one of them do you prefer? The majority of Ghanaians will say, no, just build a church for us because it is a place that we can go and offer prayers to our God so that the God rather will come down here and, and you know, build that factory for us. But let's bear in mind that the God in the sky, if he truly exists, that God is not coming to build any factory for us. That God is not coming to do anything for us again. That is why we have leaders in Ghana. That is why we have people in Ghana. That is why the land called Ghana has been given to human beings. So we have to develop the, the country called Ghana. That God don't have anything to do with us anymore. So our way of thinking, please, 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 our fellow people, our fellow Africans or our fellow Ghanaians who are watching this video, please, 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 let's all come together as one people. Let's forget about, you say something like stone, and I really like it. If you are an awakening, and you think the awakening is only coming out from religion, but still be a politi political member, then you are not awakened. Because these politics and religion, they are both, let me say they are twins. They have, uh, everything they have is in common. That is why a politician can never be, a politician in Ghana can never be an atheist. If you are an atheist, Nobody is going to vote for you. But it's either you be a Christian or a Muslim. So if you are... Sangwava. Yeah. Sangwava. Religion was created by politicians. That's it. Religion was created by very smart politicians who wanted to keep people under control. Because they know when your brain is working, they cannot deceive you. So they take you from a state of proof and they take you to a state of belief where you believe that God in the sky is coming to fix things. Because of this, they will continue to make you be dumb and you will never realize and you cannot fight them because when your brain is not working, you cannot mm -hmm. fight your oppressor. It is about mental battle. It is about the brain battling the brain. It's not about weapons and machetes. So the same politicians created the religion. The Capriniot family, they created the religion. And they were the biggest politicians in the history of Rome. Thank you. So how can you say you are awakening and you are still a follower of MPP or NDC or CPP or PNDC or blah, blah, blah? Then you are still, you are, you are, you are not a freedom fighter. You are not a freedom fighter because we want to free ourselves from these oppressors. The NPP, the NDC, these political leaders and the religious folks, we want to free ourselves from them because they are, they are, you know, they, they are the, 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 the brain, the, the brain destroyers. They destroy our brain. They destroy our mentals through politics, through religion. So how can you be an awakening and you call yourself a supporter of NDC or a supporter of NPP? Or a supporter of CN, uh, PNDC or whatever they call it. My people, we have to know it. We have to know this, that these our political leaders. They are not there as people who are coming to free us from, from, from this, 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 our poverty and all those stars in Ghana. They are not ready to do that. And this Christendom and this Islamic dom also are not ready to do that. What they always concentrate on is, is their leadership. Christians are always concentrating on their heaven. To go and walk, to go and walk on golden city, sleep on your, uh, what do you call it? On diamond, on diamond a uh, room, diamond bed, eat on a diamond, eat inside a diamond pot. Muslims are also concentrating on their 72 virgins. They are river of wine. They are always praying for their, for that they are going to help them to enter that city. So do you think Muslims are going to help the development of Ghana? Are they going to sacrifice for themselves? Are they going to sacrifice, sacrifice themselves to help we that are 
freedom fighters to to you know help uh, help fight this fight or help fight this battle no muslims and christians are not going to do that and these same muslims and christians are the same people who are voting for ndc and npp so if you are still if you are an awakening and you are still a political member then you are not a working person you are a working sleeper or whatever life so call it I Let's said wake up from walking. You see, you see, sleep some of walking. my brother. Sleep the problem, the problem with our people is this. Immediately, let 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 me even. I, I like to be addressing the so-called awakening people because we claim we are awakening. You see, our lives should set as an a, a reflection to the kind of awakening that we are preaching. You are awakening. An awakening person knows where a problem is and knows where to address the problem and how to solve it. You are awakening. You know the problem we have in Ghana. It's MPP and NDC. Yet, you are still in support of this and you call yourself awakening. No. Awakening, awakening is above the level of politics. No awakening person is a politician. Unless an awakening person who is using the awakening as a source of income? The person wants to enrich himself. So, Papa, last time I was telling somebody, you see, me, I have my money. And I have this awakening my mentality. I have this sense. Some of us, I can keep it to myself, use it to develop my family, die and go. But it is because of the love that I have for my country. I see that I cannot be quiet. I need to talk. Sometimes when you don't even speak for a week, you don't feel okay. This is what we are doing for our country. Politics and religion is the problem that we have in Ghana. And every awakened person knows this is true. Look at what pastors are doing to our people. Look at how the church is duping Ghana. A church will not pay tax. Let's, let me take uh, the church like Jehovah Witness. The Jehovah Witness people in Ghana, they don't vote. They don't vote, number one. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are not police people. They cannot become police. They don't join mm -hmm. the police. They don't join the mm -hmm. army. They, are, they don't even become lawyers. Mm -hmm. Jeff, these people expect their children to be employed and be protected by the same system. How foolish can you be? Whose child should go and be the soldier? Whose child should join the army to fight and protect the country that you are part of? Yet, because of religion, you will not. When you have problem with these people, they will take you to the court. So whose child should be the judge? Whose child should be the lawyer? That is why we are telling you, if our mindset is wrong, then religion program our mindset, and the religions be either Christianity or Islamic religion. They have programmed our mindset. Them. So the bad mindset that we have is coming as a result of the doctrines of Christianity and Islamic religion. This is let's, go. let's go. I wonder why these people keep on saying religion is not our problem but our mentality first they know that every mentality is is begins from how you you will be programmed from your childhood and all of us many of us not even many all of us in ghana we have been programmed from our childhood with this doctrine of christianity and and islamic doctrines so if you have bad mentality what do you want us to blame is it not the same books that we have to blame or the same religion that we have to put the blame on we have to blame this this religious folks their books and their religion and how we were being doctrinated from beginning of of our childhood and we have grown up now and we have this kind of mentality in our mind why do you want to tell us that we have to put the religion aside? Because religion is not our problem. I have this ideology that 
this word will one day pass and go. And this word will no more exist. And I will be, I will be, you know, rise from death. And they will, they will carry me go in the sky. And there is a city called heaven. And that city has been built already by that God. And even my room that I am going to live inside was built by a diamond or a gold. And I am, you know, I am going to live with the angels and the God by himself, the God himself in the sky. So what do you want me to, you know, what, what kind of ideology or what kind of thinking do you want me to, to you know, think about this, this planet Earth that I'm living in now? Because it, it by all means will pass one day. So if you know that your child is going to die tomorrow and your, your child is sick, are you going to worry yourself, take the child to the hospital because you know that the child is going to die tomorrow? No matter what you are going to do, the child will die. Will you, are you going to worry yourself, carry the baby, go to hospital, go and spend a lot of money Huge amount of money about a child. At the end of the day, the child will die. You won't do that. So if we know that this world is coming to an end, one day it will by all means pass, we are not going to worry ourselves, spend a lot of money to make the, this place a better place. Zangwava, let me answer our brother Nana Owusu Abuaje. He says something, so my question is, What's the way up for the development of our dear country if we ignore voting the leaders in the nation? Nana Boaje, I said this in the, my previous statement that it is not about politics. It is about mental revolution. If we are mentally revolved, we can push ideologies into our leaders. The upcoming generation of leaders will come with different and separate mindsets. This is what is going to bring change. What we need is mental revolution. That is the way forward. We need to change our mentality. Until we change our mentality, it is the same people that are going to lead us and they are going to lead us forever. This is what we are telling you people. So, Nana Boaje, that is to answer your question. We are not stopping anyone from voting. But if we are using our mentality, if we are mentally revolved, we will know how to vote. Like by this time, Ghanaian would have known that we are tired of MPP, NDC. Let us switch. But because our brains have been programmed in one direction, one, by That's our it. two, by the political leaders, and three, our media, the media people, the media people. I said, look, I speak. You see, the message that I'm giving you will travel, but it cannot go faster like what an image can do in your head. I asked someone last time, immediately someone mentions Jesus Christ. What is the first image that comes to your head? It is that image of Caesar Borgia. That is the image that comes to your head because that was the image that was presented to you as Jesus Christ from the first day. So what the media is doing to us, our Ghana moving industry, they are the biggest problem that we have. What they perpetrate to our children, what they show on screen, these are the things that have programmed us. Now, our married women, instead of going to their mothers to listen to marital advice, they watch movies like Esmeralda, Kunkumbajia, whatsoever. And they use these things to attend their marriage. They use the fairy tales in movies to handle their marital homes, and their marriages are failing because this is what the media is giving to you. And they are not telling you the people they are just acting and it is not real. So they put your mind in the, this imaginary world 
where you think everything happens like the way it's happening in Esmeralda. You think everything in the world is happening like the way it's happening in Kumkumbadia. This is how you have been programmed. This is the mentality of our people. So the way forward is mental revolution. Not let me let me add something. Let me add something. Nana Usu, you know, uh, if we Ghanaians say we want to, you know, still maintain this politics, we can maintain, we can, you know, we, we can maintain the politics and then brand it in a new way. In what way? Because we are trying to wake our peoples up. We are we are trying to wake our people up. What we are going to do now is we are no more going to sit down and let the leaders come out and tell us what they have done within that four years. But rather, we will sit down and think about what, what they have done, either it is good for us or not. And next time when we are going to vote, we have to vote against those people who are trying to play with our mind. We can maintain the politics. If we like, we can we can still maintain the politics. But the, the thing is, let's try to you know look at the the, 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 the side where we, we are trying to vote for them because they will come out and tell you that look, we have do this at this at this uh, uh, what do you call it? This place we have done that, we have done this, we have done that, but if you call some people from that place, they will tell you that, man, people, look, it is a lie. They have not done anything. They have not done it. You see, you see, the reason why this MPP and NDC, they are battling, they, they are trying to, you know, fight about this, this free education for their propaganda. Because both of them can never come out and, and tell us the good thing they can do for Ghana. The free education is what they think they can use for the, as their propaganda. So they will use that free education for their propaganda because if they, Nanado, Nanado, when last four years, Nanado, when he was doing his campaign, he said that when he comes, every district will get one factory. You are in Ghana right now. You are a Ghanaian as me. Just ask yourself, look at your district. Has your district get one factory? No. So Nanato lied to us. What he cannot do, he told us that he would do, but he, can, he, he couldn't do it. Now, he's now focusing on free education. That free education too is not going to help us because your child will go to school freely. And after that, who is going to give your child a job to do? Because it is the duty for the government to build factories, to set up companies, so that when you finish school, you complete school, you can get a job from the government. But the government is now using his money, pushing you to go to school. After you finish school, what, what, what work are you going to get to do from the government? The government don't have any work to offer you. So after free education, you become a street boy. After free education, you become a scammer. After free education, you, be, you become an unrobber. After free education, you become an imam or a pastor. They don't have anything, they don't have anything good for us. So we as Ghanaians, if we want to, you know, our country to become a better place for us, so that the young, the young ones will not travel out from the country, let's come together as one people. Let's tell the leaders, let, let, let's let them know that what they are doing to us is enough. Because they cannot come out and promise us something, then the next four years, all we could see is they have done nothing. Then they will come out again and promise us another new thing. And the next, the next four years, the same results, we will get the same results. They, they will not do anything for us. That is going to benefit us. We, the, we the civilians, they did nothing to benefit us. So our brothers and sisters, they are traveling out from the country. I know majority of people who are who has died on the Mediterranean Sea? I was once on the sea traveling from Libya to Italy in the same boat. In the same boat, four people died in the same boat with my naked eyes. 
four people died. Our boat, our boat was was you know, it was about to sink. Our boat, our boat was about to sink. But thanks to the Europeans, they read there at a point of time and they save us from this death. What is chasing us from Africa? What is chasing us from Ghana? What, what is pushing, pushing us to go out there to go and work? Or what is pushing out, pushing us from uh, pushing us out from Ghana is to go and look for a job, to go and look for a better life. Can't we do the same thing in our country? I was I was talking to my, uh, my my brothers and sisters in the same village. We have a WhatsApp group, and you know the group. The purpose of the group is we have to we, we are trying to help the development of that village, and we came together as one people. And we plan to do something. And those who are in the in, in the in the in the in the village are going to do the job with their strength. And we those are outside from the village, we have to help with with, with money. And we said everybody should pay this and that, pay this and that. And it was a few people who was able to raise money to help. And now nobody is, you know, even coming to voice. Put a voice message inside the group. And I told them that, look, don't put it in mind that you have traveled from the village. You are in another city. You went there and you found the place. The place is very beautiful. You are getting job from there. So you don't care about your village anymore. The same place where you are living now was a village as your, as, as your village. And the community members, they fought hard to make that place a better place. So don't think that once you have traveled from that village to go to a city to go and work, you don't have to turn, your, turn back to the, to the village where you were born to help develop the village. No. If you have this mentality, then you are a fool. You are a fool. That is what we Ghanaians are. We, get, we, we have a lot of people. In, in abroad here, which are, you know, getting benefits from the government here in Europe, in America, but immediately they will come on social media and they hear their fellow Ghanaians talking about the development of Ghana, they will come out and fight you that, hey, man, guys, stop what you are saying. You are just lying to people. These same people is in Europe. It's in America, it's in Asia, it's in Saudi Arabia. Benefiting, benefiting from the government. But they don't want us to tell you the truth so that our government will wake up from its asses and they help development Ghana. It's not, a, it's not, we don't have, we, we don't have to get that bad mentality towards our nation. If we keep on doing that, I tell you, I will say it and say it again. A day is coming that we, that thing that we are living in Europe, living in America, we are going to give birth. So our generations, our, our great grandchildren will be living with them. Let me tell you, some days are coming, they will chase out, they will chase us out from their country because we also own a country. Go there, fight for the country, help develop the country, then stay there and work for yourself. Last one, I, I would like to land here, and I will thank you a lot for this opportunity. Uh, Sankofa, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I want to end the video here also. Uh, yeah, Nano Uswabwaji, thanks for accepting my reply. And uh, thank you everyone for being here. CSF, I've told you, awakening is more deep. Awakening is more broad than just stop going to church or stop being a Muslim, okay? Stop going to church and stop being a Muslim is just a step. It's, it's, it's just a stage in awakening. You have to be awakening at every angle of your life, at every aspect of your life. I tell you every time that religion makes you a very good hypocrite. When you are awakening, you don't have to be a hypocrite anymore. You now have to step into the reality of life.
to process life in accordance with what is happening. Focus on the things that you can see and touch with your naked eye. Stop focusing on the unseen. So when you are going to vote, look at your area, look at your environment, and see how the government has affected your area. Do not go and vote because the government showed you a video of something they did thousands of miles away from you that you cannot see with your eye. I said I was on the voter road and I saw all this shelter that they are putting together claiming one district, one factory. I went there and there was nothing in them. It was just an empty shelter. They are not doing anything. So please, when you are going to vote, think. NDC and NPP is not the solution that we have we, we have for Ghana. The solution we need is a mental revolution. The solution we need is a change of our mindset. If not, look, let Prophet Muhammad be president of Ghana. No, let God himself be the president of Ghana. Let uh, Muhammad be the chief justice and let Jesus be the vice president. Ghana will still not develop because we need a change of mindset we need a change of mentality we need to stop a lot of things we are doing we need to be producers instead of consumers do not consume but think of production that is how you develop a nation thank you very much my name is lifestone gh and this is my page african youth empowerment you can follow all our social media handles Chronicles of Abraham Bemoshi, Truth is One by Otimo Finisher, Samson Seto, Kabna SSK, The New Generation TV, our brother Chip Chap is there. You can follow our brother Openye Jekum Bosomba on Facebook. He also teaches great knowledge. Please follow us. We are teaching our people. We want to change the mindset of our people. There is no heaven anywhere that you are going to go. There is no place that is somewhere that is better than where you find yourself. You have to build your environment to the specification that you want. When you build your mansion, you build a mansion according to what your heart desires. That is how you must treat the world. That is how you must treat Africa. Please, let not any man of God, any imam, any religious leader lie to you that you will die and you will go to a place and you will be given 72 virgins to sleep with. Because of that, you change your mumu mentality and you want to destroy this earth. You put suicide vests and go and bomb people just because you want 72 women to sleep with. I tell you, with your level of education, it's either you are stupid or you are dumb. Please, don't let your pastor lie to you that this world is not your home. You are going to leave children behind and your descendants are coming to continue from where you left off. So please, when you come, buy a plot of land. Let your child come and build a fence wall around it. Let your child's children also come and put up a single room. And let their children also come to build a two-bedroom. Start something for your generation to come and continue. Stop focusing on things that you cannot see or prove. My name is Lifestone GH. I'll end my video here. Thank you very much. Abraham is life. Seto is life. Go anywhere and listen to wisdom. Till we meet again. Uh, I would say I love everybody and bye-bye. I open up on this one. These are the words of a wise man. Nobody carries a heavy burden than he who has evil intentions. Once there's a creation, there must be a creator. God whose supernatural powers and miracles can only be found in the book but not in real life. It's equal to a God who never existed. Nasajina and Nejuma, but you know bread. Abraham Ben Moshe, leader of Common Sense Family. No size. Wagwan people are.